Welcome back to another Vlogmas day. <sighs> that kind of feels good to say. Anyway, today I thought I might show you another dessert. This one is a chocolate cake and it's a paleo chocolate cake, except the icing isn't paleo, but it does mean that it's gluten-free. So if you need a gluten-free option, this is a great one. I know people who don't eat gluten-free at all who love this cake. With that said, the reason that I like this dessert actually is because you can somewhat make it ahead. So I don't need this cake until Saturday and it's now Tuesday. So I'm gonna make it and bake it tonight and then I'm gonna freeze it, which you should do either way because it's easier for frosting. And then I'm gonna frost it on Friday night and then I'll just take it with me on Saturday where I'm going. So nothing has to be like rushed around the day that I'm trying to take it somewhere. So that's why I like it. And that's why I think it simplifies my life and why I like to take it to holiday things. So if you've been looking for a gluten-free chocolate cake or if baking videos are just satisfying to you, join me. Okay, so first things first, you want to grease your cake pans with some kind of oil. I'm gonna use butter, because that's what we use for everything. You could use coconut oil, you could even use olive oil, and then line some paper in it. Because I have this spring form pan that comes out, I am actually only going to line the bottom. And then I'm gonna attach this over and just basically the butter will just be for the the sides to make sure this doesn't stick and then you're going to take a bowl and combine your dry ingredients and then in a separate bowl you're going to combine your wet ingredients and once the wet ingredients are all together you're going to add half the dry ingredients mix until incorporated and add the rest of the dry ingredients and mix until incorporated and then you take all of your batter and you divide it between the three cake pans. So let's get to it. Did I mention that the first thing you should do is preheat your oven? Do that. 350. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it on the stand mixer. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna add half the dry ingredients, let that combine, and then I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients, let it combine, and then we'll pour it into the pans. I know I already explained that once, but here we go again.
Okay, well, I just took those cakes out of the oven and I remembered something from when I baked this before. The last time I baked this cake, I checked it with a toothpick and waited till the toothpick came out clean and I ended up burning the bottom. You need to check this cake with a knife. I don't know if it's because the flour is different, so it's just not as dry of a cake, which is honestly great. But whether it's that or some other reason, it's better checked with a knife because the toothpick will take forever to come out clean and I ended up over baking the cake that way. So checking it with a knife is good. A knife is still accurate because if it's really raw, the knife will still come out messy. And so once the knife comes out clean, you know it's done. Did that all make sense? Well, so yeah, so those are gonna cool. Then I'm going to wrap them and put them in the freezer tonight and they will sit in there until Friday. And I will see you back here then and we'll frost this baby. Now we're gonna make our frosting. I'm making two for this particular cake. And the one I'm starting with is a cream cheese buttercream. So I'm gonna start with room temperature cream cheese and butter. I'm gonna put that in my mixer and mix until they look well combined. This will require me to scrape my paddle attachment every so often to make sure it's mixing well. Then I'll add my vanilla and finally I slowly add the powdered sugar about a half a cup at a time. Once all my powdered sugar is in, I just let the mixer run just a little bit and let the frosting get nice and fluffy and then it's good to go. second frosting I'm making is a chocolate buttercream. We'll start by beating our butter in our mixer to make it nice and smooth. Then mix our cocoa powder and powdered sugar together in a separate bowl. And once our butter is smooth, we add half of our powdered sugar mixture, just a half a cup at a time. Once half the mixture has been added, you can add your vanilla and your milk and mix that until it's fully incorporated. Then you finish adding the rest of your powdered sugar mixture, still a half a cup at a time, until it's all in. Then, just like before, just beat the frosting until nice and fluffy and you're ready to frost. Okay, so it's Friday, it's getting late. Frosting is made, and so we're just gonna get right to frosting this cake. The way this recipe is written is for the cream cheese buttercream to go in the center of the cake between the layers and the chocolate buttercream to go on the outside. So that's what I did for this cake, however, you can choose just to use one of the buttercreams for the entirety of the cake, just make sure you make more of it.
So here I'm just transferring it to a more presentable platter. And I didn't get much footage of me decorating the cake because I couldn't get a good angle, but you do get to see the outcome. And I'm not a professional anyway. I just took some fresh flowers and placed them as best I could. So now we're coming to an end and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out some of my other videos and subscribe if you like the content. Thanks so much for watching and have a good rest of your day.